What's up guys? So today's match review video is going to be about my second national title match. This match was insane. It comes down to the last six seconds. I'm not going to tell you guys what happened. I'm going to be quick with this intro because it's a little bit of a long video, but if you've bought any of my instructionals at brandonreedthrakes.com slash store or watched any of my stuff on Instagram, I think this is probably the best match for you to watch to kind of see who I am uh, as far as a wrestler. This is a full match. This isn't just highlights like most of these matches. And also there's my post match interview with track wrestling. It might be a winning interview it might be a losing interview who knows you're gonna see but this is my second time in the national finals against tanner farmer former uh defensive lineman for the university of nebraska also a former fargo national runner up two times i believe and a guy who comes out of high school from illinois as a multiple time state champ i believe just an amazing guy super cool guy i'd consider him a friend too i went and trained with him after this but it's an entertaining match it's a informative match and i think it's something that i learned from and something that you guys can learn from too so uh with that being said let's get to the match also this is the espn version so thank you to espn for letting me use this footage uh, let's do it we're gonna go to our title tilt at 285 the defending national champion junior brandon reed and his opponent tonight pretty impressive in his First year of wrestling out of Highland, Illinois, representing Concordia University, Tanner Farmer. Big boy. Yeah, Highland, uh, Illinois, close to my neck of the woods in the St. Louis metro area. Always strong. They, they, they are always strong in football and wrestling. So. Well, so strong, let me tell you that Farmer is a three year starter for the University of Nebraska football team. The reason, while he's at Concordia, he's a grad student in his first year of wrestling and pretty impressed to come out in your first year at the NEI level and you're in the championship match. That's not beginner's luck. No. I, I don't think there's, yeah, it's the fact that you're, you gotta have strength, leverage, positioning. It'd be, be fun to see these guys going at it. And uh, when you look at the physique of both of these guys, they have spent some quality time in the weight room. Here's how they got here. As you see, two decisions by Reed as he gets his way into the championship match. Our lead official in this matchup at 285 will be Jerron Quincy out of Missouri City, assisted by Mr. Matt Finley out of Greenville, South Carolina. Underway. And when you think of guys at 285, you generally think that they fill up the entire weight class at 285. That's not the case here with Brandon Reed. Probably a little bit under the 285 mark. However, the opponent in Tanner Farmer's case, two big specimens right here. Yeah, and it was Reed beating Corey Walker last year in the championship match, five to two. Good shot there, that was quick. How about that quickness exhibited by Brandon Reed, the defending champ, and then Farmer is just going to crunch down on him, and this is just simple power right here. It really is. It, it, I mean, you cannot get a better shot. You're as deep as can be to finish what normally you, you'd be able to finish easily, but like you say, Farmer, just strong, and, and that's a lot. Once he throws his, his weight down, it's going to be hard to cut that corner for him. So the perspective of getting the proper angle will be the key here for Brandon Reed. Yeah, it's really one of those things, you know, I, I, we had a, a state champion that he was 220 pounds at the 285 pound weight class. And we always talked to him, you know, he's a very quick, strong kid. We said, stay out from underneath these guys. When you get underneath a guy where you're giving up 50, 60 pounds, nothing good happens. You're either gonna get a stalemate at best case scenario, otherwise they're able to spin around and get a takedown as he Reed gets an inadvertent finger through the eye. It was through their eyes, not done with an intent. Subsequently, no point would be exchanged. Yeah, I think you could see Farmer yeah. kind of apologize. If, hey, I didn't, didn't mean anything there. Midway through our first period, no score. Tanner Farmer, graduate student at Concordia. We mentioned briefly that he's got three letter winning situations as a three-year starter for Cornhusker football in Lincoln. But uh, he's well equipped. Pretty stout. 
see if it pays dividends, see if he can wear down the defending champion. It's just, this is one of the neater stories, really. But it really is. All matches. I mean, just so many great matches tonight, but you just don't see this, a first-year guy getting to the national championship match. And for that matter, going from a D1 institution to a grad program at the NAI level yep. and taking advantage of a situation, and now you're wrestling for an NAI national title at 285, that, that's pretty special. Yeah. Football coaches always, they, they love when their guys wrestle, especially their big guys you know, on the line because it really helps you continue to, to get better as far as leverage and balance and foot speed and foot, you know, foot position. And, uh, you know, Farmer's a perfect example of that, that it's only the other way around. You know, a football player, great shot by Reed, but I think Farmer knew where he was short time and saved by the bell. Well, and we say oftentimes, right, especially at 285, when you're outsized like Brandon Reed is, uh, pick your poison or pick your spots of where you're going to take a shot. I mean, orchestrate it. Don't overdo it to where you might get a little bit too tired. A perfect example where Brandon Reed was very effective with it. Unfortunately, had he had maybe three or four seconds, he would have secured a takedown. Yep. Farmer's out quickly to begin the second. He leads one to nothing. And maybe the strategy there as far as Reed to let him up is, I don't want to exert a lot of energy. He's got more size on me. Just get him back up on my feet. I'll have an opportunity to choose down the third. So a one to nothing lead for Tanner Farmer, the senior eligibility-wise at Concordia grad student. And uh, pretty interesting. In his first season at the NEI level, he was the GPAC wrestler of the year. I mean, that's Amazing. pretty special. Yep. If you notice, though, it's, he's, he's in good position, and he's... He's not trying to, you know, a lot of, a lot of heavier uh, 285s, they're going to try to work the upper body, or try to get under hooks, trying to control, you know, from a 2 on one And really, Farmer just being very, you know, very good in position. There again, got caught. And now Reed's got it. Big lateral drop by Brandon Reed. A two-point takedown. And a two-point near fall. Good job by Reed as he... He pounced on the opportunity when he got Farmer a little off balance. And Reed didn't hesitate, did he, Todd? He wasn't afraid to take a calculated risk. He got right in there, knew that perhaps Reed or uh, Farmer was a little bit out of position, felt comfortable in there, and a nice little mini lateral drop for a big four-point move. You got some speed, so get your feet going. He's off balance a little bit. And boy, he didn't just, he wasn't going to sell for just the takedown. That's, that's smart. Smart tactics by Brandon Reed. So Brandon Reed, with a big second period, leads it four to one, and his choice is neutral. So he doesn't go down. He doesn't have to because it isn't you know a one nothing match now. Where he's you know a one nothing match, and you say, okay, I want to get that one back, get back on my feet. Now he can go in the neutral position. He was able to to score that takedown and two near fall towards the latter part of that second period. Let's see. So now they're gonna Challenge. wave off the near fall. I initially thought that there was a near fall that was satisfied. <laughs> Our scoreboard on the monitor equals that. Wow, that would be a huge surprise if near fall was not oh, warranted that, there. I can't imagine that would be the case. If Farmer doesn't turn quickly the other way, it could have been four near fall. If we can get our professionals to maybe give us a re-glimpse of what that lateral drop orchestrator looked like. That's a huge break wow. for Tanner Farmer. It really is because now it, it also changes really the strategy as, as far as you know would Reed take down, but in this situation it's one point match. And it's something that they didn't feel compelled enough to go back and look at. That's somewhat of a surprise. 
clearly on that replay. We got the, the best referees out there, but they did not feel it could met the uh, two-point near-fall criteria. So we're in the final period. Two to one, the advantage. Here comes Farmer with some underhooks on Reed. Near the out-of-bounds line, got to be careful. There's going to be a 10 down on the edge for Farmer. He now leads three to two. And now we all go back to the near fall where it wasn't awarded. Would that be the difference? Man, yeah. oh, man. So if you're Reed, you gotta you got to race this out of your mind, have bad short-term memory, and just say, hey, I'm down by one. I need to get up and away. And that's the thing. He's got to be quick on the whistle because he has size disadvantage here. Don't let Farmer set in and get his weight going forward on Reed's hands. So 101 remaining here at 285's individual title matchup. He's got to keep the hips clear. Dude, you can't let Farmer get behind him. He's running out of space here as Farmer's, he's throwing his weight forward. Those hands are really heavy. And if Farmer's able to anchor, it's going to be big trouble for Reed. Farmer going to try to come out front on the returning champ. 40 seconds to go. He's still got his hips free barely, but see that that leg is hooked by Farmer, which makes it difficult for Reed to kind of slouch out, shuck out the back. This is a tough position, but they get a reset, stalling. And they're gonna issue a stall warning to Farmer. Someone at this point a little bit immaterial, but now he's gonna be forced to wrestle or either let him go. Reset is big for Reed. Let's see if he capitalizes. Brandon Reed trying to come to his feet. And get the return. Brandon Reed. There's a stalling in one to tie it up. Boy, what a great sequence there. That Farmer, you say you let him go, and then you don't get the another stalling warning. It's all that balance there. You have to kind of think, do I let him go, or do I give up the stalling point? So, And that's what I talked about. He probably would have been better sought just yeah. to let him go because... Stalling point could, or yeah. when he could catch back up with him in the Absolutely. overtime. Absolutely. Now we're going to go to a one-minute sun victory overtime between Brandon Reed and Tanner Farmer. That reset, we saw it in the previous championship match tonight. A reset with 10 seconds, same situation here, and the bottom wrestler with the reset is able to capitalize. So one minute on the clock, the first guy to strike first will be your winner. Who has more in the gas tank here? Right now, I think it would have to be Brandon Reed. We'll just have to wait and see. And boy, heavy on the head is Reed. Waiting to pick his spot. Going to try to stalk him near the out-of-bounds line. And there it is. Going to be a double leg and a takedown. Yep. And Brandon Reed with the finish title in sudden victory. Final score, five to three. And if, if you said it, Ben. Reed had more left in the tank. Just a little bit more. But Tanner Farmer put up a great fight. And... Another terrific championship match that we've seen. So another outstanding individual matchup to conclude our title bouts tonight. Brandon Reed victorious in sudden victory one. Final score five to three. And I'm telling you right now, Tanner Farmer is ex absolutely just exhausted sitting over there in the green corner chair. He's had about enough. But you know what? Credit the defending champion because he never panicked, he never gave up. And uh, in the end, he secures his second individual title on pure athleticism. He knew Tanner Farmer was in trouble and he took advantage of it and he pulled the trigger and he won his second title. Yeah, what, well, you know. One of our guys that we like to talk about, and you're, you're friends with Tom Brands, one of his sayings is, you only get what you earned. You only deserve what you earned. And and that's the thing. You can say, oh, well, you know, he should have had the two, and then that was taken away. And it, But at the end of the day, it's one of those things. Sometimes luck is in your corner, but as a defending champ, he has certainly, you know, earned the, the position to be there and be able to defend his championship. Your NEI All-American Award honorees. 
Victoria Tanner Farmer. And your 285 pound national champion from Lindsey Wilson, Brandon Reed. Well, it wasn't easy, but in the end, the champion prevailed for the second track wrestling here at the NAIA Championships with two-time NAIA National Heavyweight Champion Brandon Reed of Lindsey Wilson. Man, you faced a behemoth and Tanner Farmer coming off the football field a year ago. Uh, Everybody's talking about him, not talking about me. Everybody's talking about him. Did you like it that way or did it fire you up? It fired me up a little bit. I felt a little disrespected, to be honest with you. Saw it all over Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, stuff like that. I was like, cool. He hasn't wrestled in five years. This is it's a hobby for him. It's a lifestyle for me. I stayed all summer. I stayed all summer for four years so far. I just been doing this stuff, grinding consistently. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's big. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, he was a D1 football player. But you know, the hype don't talk. The work does. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little tired of seeing him, not seeing my own face, especially after I won nationals last year. When was he on your radar for uh, the first time? Probably I saw Track Wrestling post something about it, honestly. I think I saw them say, you know, Nebraska football player coming to Concordia. I was like, oh man, this guy's going to be good. And I saw him beat a pretty good Division One wrestler. And I was like, all right, man, like, it's cool. I beat plenty of Division One wrestlers, plenty of ranked guys in D1. No one's talking about me. Again, as I said, I hate the hype. So, you know, it fueled me. As soon as I saw him, I was like, I, I, I dreamed about him. When I, when I worked out, when I did cardio, I thought about him. You know, I wasn't gonna let him beat me. You know, so. What was your game plan going in? Break him. Like I said, I've been doing this for four years straight in college. You know, I still have one more year left. I've been grinding all summer and stuff. I was like, there's no way he's in better shape than me. No one is. Again, he's big, but I'm fast. I'm just as strong as him, and I'm a lot better at wrestling. So. That was my game plan. Just be me. Be confident. He takes me down. I'm going to take him down. Everybody said he was going to try to throw me. I threw him. So, and yeah, it was what a hard match. Don't get me wrong, but he just wasn't. Like I said, the hype. The hype had, had me thinking I was going to be facing Andre the Giant, but I was just facing another little boy, and that's how I see everyone I wrestle, these little kids. Well, can you walk me through the winning takedown? He was really tired. My hand fight, I could feel his, um, him breaking in the third period when I was hand fighting. Uh, and then, of course, when I got that stall call, I knew I was going to get it. Uh, he was just hanging a lot. I was chasing him. I was like, I'm going to get this takedown. As soon as he reached, uh, I called that a duck double, and I hit that all the time. I beat a few good D1 guys this year with it, took down Zach Elam like three times with it, and I was like, if I can take down a junior world finalist, I can take him down with it. So he reached. I just, I was like, all right, I got it. I've drilled this move 10,000 times. Let's do it one more. You go feet to back in the first period for points there, and, you know, the board said four for a while, and then it winds up being two. How'd you regroup after that? It was weird. He was on his back for about four seconds, but I didn't get anything. How'd I regroup? Didn't have to. Good. No factor. Just keep going. Love Jocko. He says it all the time. No factor. I can't control it. Like I said, I train all the time. One takedown's not enough. One back, back point's not enough. If I had to take him down three more times, I could have. I'm just going to push the pace. I was meant to beat him. He wasn't meant to beat me. All right, guys, that was it. That was the second national title match. Of course, like I said, it was going to be super dramatic. It was one of the ones, if you're one of my students or one of the guys who've bought the instructional, which is usually one of you who's watching this video, um, I would say to watch, especially if you want to learn how to hand fight, which you can at uh, brandonreed3x.com slash dominate. Uh, probably one of my best wrestling memories uh, comes from this video. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you next time.